All right, I know it's been a while, but I'm back and I uh, did some polling to figure out where I should pick back up on this tutorial racket of mine. And it seems like the biggest interest was in Connect Point Clouds. And so I did a follow up. The primo topic is combining with Connect Shop Tracking. So we're going to definitely focus on that. Um, but there are some other interesting uses for the RGB data, which we'll get into. And I'll get into maybe some of the basics of mixed reality with the Vive, but that's probably best kept for another in-depth tutorial because it's another hardware system we'd have to cover. Uh, as I mentioned in the poll, you should go for uh, Malcolm's demo, which I have open in another tab here. So as you can see, this isn't exactly new. This is posted in 2014, been downloaded over 12,000 times, but it's still a complicated topic for many uh, and something that a lot of people just want to get into and haven't yet. So we're going to go over the basics of that. And uh, yeah, here we go. So here we can see that Malcolm's example works right out of the box. Um, and if we just zoom in on the geometry, we can uh, scroll it around and see the 2.5D representation of my new studio that I'm not fully done setting up yet, but uh, it's pretty excited about it. Anyway, very nice. But you'll notice if I display enable our render that it looks kind of strange. I reach my hand out, but it's getting smaller. That's because what we're seeing is pretty pretty much just um, backwards. It's seeing from the back side of the point cloud. And that's because um, the point cloud information is coming in in relation to the connect itself which is reporting back in meters from camera and that camera would be opposite of our touch camera and I'm not explaining that very well but if I just spin this around that looks a little bit more reasonable cool so why why is that well if we take a look at our connect top color point cloud input we can see it's 32-bit RGB red green and blue are encoding the X Y and Z position of the intersection point of a bunch of laser beams that shoot from the connect over there and you can see my hand gets darker as I get closer and lighter more further away that's because the luminance is encoding distance from camera. So at the furthest most point, you would see a full blue. So for instance, if I went over here, over to channel mix, and if I just turn down the other channels for our visualization's sake, you can see it gets a little darker. As I get further away, a little lighter. Because this is 32-bit, it's hard to see in the 8-bit color range of our screen here. But perhaps I could use level to um, somewhat compress our range. Now you get a better sense. And as you can see, I had to go to numbers above 1 because 32-bit goes outside of our normal RGB color range. That'll become much more useful later when we go over other uses for the 32-bit point cloud data beyond making an actual point cloud render, that is. But that is the primary subject of this, so let's get to it. All right, so we've already done a 180 on this, which makes it a lot nicer. 
So now, let's do some boring stuff. What I'm going to do is put nulls on the end of these. Call this one null position. This one can be null color. You can name them whatever you want, of course. Suppose I could name them. Let's name them after the inputs that they're going to go to. How about that? That just is so much more cohesive. No offense to Malcolm. Thank you very much for posting this. Okay, so now we've got our nulls inserted before we start sampling in GLSL world. But uh, you'll notice nothing's changed. The whole point of that is now we can start adding more effects to our signal chain before it hits the shader. Um, so most, most often, or maybe not most often, but often you'll want to say have your body without the rest of the crap in your room so how might you do that well you could use some techniques that we've covered in the previous connect top tutorial for uh, isolating yourself from the scene using the player index to create a silhouette so we'll just go to player index camera remap so it's the same resolution as everyone else that's me. Great. Then I can throw myself through a threshold. Everything less or equal to zero. <laughs> it's cut off. Great. Unfortunately, tethered to this, I can't walk very far and still narrate, so it should work all the way across the room. One interesting thing is whatever you're touching becomes part of you, so there's my chair. We'll see that in Point Cloud World shortly. It's important to turn this into 32-bit um, nearest pixel. so that when we add a mat it works properly with this 32-bit image. I'm not sure exactly why that is but uh, it's important. So right here I'm just adding something to comp over. This tutorial kind of assumes you're familiar with the basic compositing operations. If not, maybe I can cover that later. Let me know in a comment or a message, please. Cool. Why don't we also... Now we can take a shortcut for color. and just multiply by a mask. Groovy. There we go. Now it's pretty much just me with a bit of artifacts floating around. Not bad. Let's see if we can improve that a little. Let's see. 
Let's make sure all of this is in nearest pixel. Ah, 32 bit. nearest pixel mode cool that seems to have gotten rid of some of that artifacting so that's very important um, when you're dealing with 32-bit stuff it's very precise so you have to make sure that everything in the signal flow is very precise which will start to use up your um, VRAM so tr if you don't have a a lot of it on your GPU you need to be very careful with how many nodes you use um, in the 32-bit color space once you start running out of headroom and the frame rates start dropping you really have to kinda go through and look maybe I don't need to use a blur here and a blur there or two stages of thresholding whatever whatever the case is anyway okay so now that we've isolated from our reality if you will um, one good trick to make sure you just don't get any weirdness um, if I were to go in here sometimes you can actually see pixels you're not supposed to see in this case seems like I've got it under control but uh, if we were to go into our fragment shader just to be safe we can add if frag color zero alpha equals zero discard the fragment So now that we've jumped into GLSL world, let's actually take a a close but not too deep look at how this uh, how this works. Because we're gonna be more focused on things you can do with the point cloud rather than the uh, intricacies of GLSL. That's a much deeper topic. Um, so basically, we import our vertices from this grid 1920 by 1080 and our input um, maps are also 1920 by 1080 which is um, a nice one-to-one -one mapping so basically as commented presumably by Malcolm um, we uh, are basically going to replace the vertex positions of all of those points with positions we will derive from the RGB values of the point cloud texture which seems super easy right okay cool um, so how how do you go about doing that so basically uh, what Malcolm's done is taken the vertex IDs and use those to create a custom UV map that we'll then um, use to sample our in, our um, our incoming uh, textures. So does that samples our point cloud and our color texture, um, and then applies our gl global transform to the new the newly acquired position. Um, or global deform and uh, world space transform um, and then it sends out the color map to our pixel shader so now um, our pixel shader will just apply the color map and we will discard with this line I added um, any pixels with an alpha of zero if they weren't already hidden. 
So that's pretty much the super basics of all this. Um, I'm going to kind of get into the more fun stuff where we can start leveraging our connect shop skeletal tracking skills from the previous tutorials and combine them with the point cloud to do some sorts of fun mixed reality stuff.